Well, it's about time you got here. Hi, I'm Rick Dancer. We want to do something a little different with this next half hour of television. We want you to put your accomplishments away and your sense of responsibility and all those things. Sit back in your easy chair and dream a little with us. Our dream is going to take us to Alaska, to a fishing lodge where my son works. We're going to go to Junction City to a farm and we're going to go to a stable. No, not that stable, but it is a barn that's changing the lives of a lot of people. You ready to go? All right, Will, roll the open to the show. I'm not dead. That sounds like something interesting. It's like going back in time. I mean, this is like the lower 48 was 100 years ago. It's nature in its uh, simple form. You know, it's not the uh, it's not the TV form. You know, there's nobody for miles. I mean, literally miles and miles. You're not going to see another soul. This is what we get to do out here. We get to show people wild Alaska, or just nature, I guess, in its truest sense. Because I think Alaska, for a lot of people, is a bucket list. It's one of those once-in-a-lifetime trips. I think it's something that words can't really express. It's beyond, it's beyond pictures, it's beyond words, it's beyond anything really tangible. Welcome to Alaska, a place where you don't manufacture remote. Remote is everywhere you look. There are 29 volcanoes in Alaska, and one of the most active sits right behind the Readout Mountain Lodge. We're gonna introduce you to this hidden jewel one of the coolest things about this place is there's only one way in and there's only one way out. This is Alaska's version of Grand Central Station. There's a, a huge percentage of the state, like 98% or something, that's not even accessible by road. So airplanes, whether wheels or floats, have to be able to service people that live or have want to run businesses in the wilderness. Everything is flown into and out of the Readout Mountain Lodge on a float plane. Everything. You fly for about 45 minutes down the inlet, down the ocean. And it's, it's new and unique, but it's not quite spectacular beauty. It's just ocean and, and seashore and uh, coastline. And then you get into the mountains all of a sudden. A trip to Readout Mountain is like a trip back in time to another world. I've flown into, I can't even tell you how many, dozens of lodges over my flying career, and um, Readout Mountain Lodge is the most beautiful location, for one thing. There are no roads, no cell phones, and no reminders of life as we know it. This is wilderness. This is what earned Alaska the honor of being considered the last frontier. The main features is certainly the Mount Readout, is to be able to look at a 10,000 foot volcano, active volcano within view from a number of different angles around the surrounding area. But what's also become really popular is just the Crescent River Valley. Just a picturesque valley with uh, rivers converging and flowing right through the center of it and uh, 4,000 foot peaks either side of you. Peaks that seem to watch over you. 
Every turn, every view filled with towering mountains. I think it's just more and more difficult to find completely remote locations anymore with, with no other operators and, and no, other, no other crowds. At Readout Mountain Lodge, isolation is their specialty. The lodge is situated on five privately owned acres nestled in the shadow of Readout Mountain. All this in the middle of four million acres of national park and preserve. Here, you are alone. Just you, the other guests, the staff, and the wilderness. We have six little private log cabins um, throughout the property. They each have their own bathroom, which includes a toilet, shower, sink, hot water, heat, uh, with a thermostat inside for you to control. Uh, we have a queen and a twin bed in each cabin with just the most, the best flannel sheets ever. At Readout Mountain Lodge, remote doesn't mean roughing it. Everyone says that the beds hold them hostage every morning and they don't want to get out. There's a cedar hot tub enclosed in a gazebo with screen windows that open. It has 300 degree views of Crescent Lake and the Chigmet Mountains with our hanging glacier. The main lodge is where all the activity happens. It's kind of the heart of the property. Um, it's where all the life is, where I feed you, where you come to converse with the other guests, where everybody comes to just kind of chill and hang out. And we want to make sure that people are coming here and getting what they want. You're really feeling like the vacation they're on is theirs. Life at Readout Mountain Lodge is simple for the guests. A simple place in the middle of the most wild, untamed land you will ever visit. In Alaska, everything is bigger, wilder, and more extreme. We call it kind of rustic luxury because for everything that's here, it was brought in by a float plane, which is pretty incredible to think about. Nothing's really fancy five-star rooms, but they're really nice and they're really comfortable and the beds are, you know, the beds are cozy and the, the showers are hot and the towels are fluffy, the food is good and the beer is cold and I think people get here and they realize what they really need to live and be happy. And I think it brings people down, back down to the basics of what do I need to be happy? The family who owns Lockmead Farms has almost become like my own family. When I go out there to shoot some video, I get lots of hugs, and if I'm really good, I get some ice cream. They do have the best milk products, but it's their story that makes their product taste that much better. The dream started more than 70 years ago. Granddad and his wife saved their pennies to buy this piece of land near Junction City. Three generations later, with a fourth starting to work and a fifth not far behind, the same family, much bigger these days, still runs the Lockmead Farms. A single source dairy where every drop of precious milk comes from the same herd. Most milk producers pull from a pool of milk from cows and dairies galore. They think it's normal to truck the milk 60 miles or more to a processing plant. At Lockmead Farms, we wouldn't think of doing that with our milk products. 60 miles is simply too long and too far. Our dairy is only four miles from our plant. What we milk on Monday is at our Dairy Mart stores Tuesday night. At Lockmead Farms, that's simply the way it's done. Isn't it time you try Lockmead Farm products? You will find them at your neighborhood Dairy Mart store, the home of Lockmead Farms, or in your local natural food store. So five years ago, when I lost that little race for Secretary of State, I fumbled around for a few months trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. If you want to know the truth, I'm still wondering what I'm going to do with my life. But I took my camera one day and went down to the Ride Able Stables. They were just down the street from my home. They've moved since then, but this is a story I shot five years ago. Take a look. George Beverly, not your typical cowboy, but boy does he like to ride. 
His days on horseback started way back in、uh, March. That horse there changed his life. George is almost six years old. He has classic autism, which means he had it since birth. So the very first lesson, I swear, Monica taught him the difference between left and right, because he had a physical action to do with it. He understood it. He got the horse to do what he wanted, and he was so proud of himself. Proud in a cowboy sort of way. George is in his element. I mean, to be able to say something or do something and have the animal respond is huge. And he loves it. He talks about Chica, his horse, all week long. Raising a child with a special ability is challenging and amazing, especially on days like this. He is so capable. It doesn't seem like a disability. He just learns differently. All right, country boy. Say cheese. <laughs> <laughs> George, you are funny. <laughs> has your has your definition of a disability changed? Oh, definitely. There aren't any. It's not a disability. It's a special need that you need to make some adjustments for. But it's not a disability. Julie Testy started riding with Ride Able a year ago. Julie told her doctor she needed something for the pain. The horse changed everything. Now I start riding the horse. And the pain level has dropped, like ten being worse, one being no,、uh, nothing. It's dropped down to a two. And Julie's balance is better. It's hard to say why this relationship between these folks and these horses works.、Okay. What's so, the magic? The、What? horses. It's the relationship with the horses. It's that mystery relationship. Why are the horses important? Why? Do, why does it work? I don't know why it works. I just know it does. Doesn't really matter why. Not to George, who's back at the hitching post, rides over for today. But this little cowboy knows he'll be back, because he's a country boy. Ride Able has a new stable in Goshen. Look at this place. It's a super nice barn. And they're having a fundraiser for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. You can purchase a Norbest turkey, and the proceeds go to Ride Able. Twelve pound turkey, twenty bucks. Sixteen pounder, twenty five bucks. Twenty pounder, thirty dollars. So to find out more information, just go to rideable.org, and everything's right on there for you. Oh, and the other day I talked to George's mom on Facebook, and she told me George is ten years old now, fourth grade. He's doing great. Four years ago, we started working on the Senator Hatfield documentary. I would never have believed that someone I haven't really met could affect my life this much. People ask me all the time, "Hey, Rick, you're going to run for public office again?" But every time I did an interview for the Hatfield Project, I have to admit I'd get that bug again. I got to warn you, it's not color corrected and the sound is not corrected. And if my co-producers knew I was letting you see this, they would kill me. So shh, don't tell them. A gentleman of the highest order, and、uh, well respected. He saw a tapestry that very few people saw. Most people see threads. He saw the tapestry. I learned a lot because people would say to me, "Well, Mark Hatfield, he's a Republican, therefore X, Y, Z." Well, no, he's not that kind of Republican. You can't label him. That way, and and describe him with any integrity. So the irony of this is that the atomic bomb may have saved his life, and then seeing what the effect of the atomic bomb was on people caused him to devote much of his life to、um, the elimination, if possible, of these weapons from the face of the earth. We all owe our present existence, our successes, and the good things that we've been able to do for our people. We all owe that to the efforts of the senator. You cannot make a deity out of somebody. That's wrong. And I think the 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 folks realize that that he had some shortcomings too, like 
He was a human being, like everybody else. And I remember going into the meeting, and Mark was sitting in a chair kind of in the middle of the room, and no other senator was sitting around him. And I went and I sat next to him, and by and large we were able to convince the group we're, we're not going to start taking people's chairmanships away because of one vote. But afterwards, Mark thanked me a lot. He said that, that was one time when he really felt lonely. But the way he survived the tough times, where he clearly turned to his faith and depended on it, on it completely, are the times when we really got that. I think what is perfectly evident is you don't have a person who hedged and trimmed throughout his career and was courageous at isolated moments. You have a courageous person throughout a career who at very specific moments demonstrated that courage in very vivid ways. I think he has left a, a wonderful example for people to follow, but I think individuals have to be willing to lose. And so many just want to get reelected so badly. Uh, Mark Hatfield was ready to lose. I mean, he didn't want to lose but he was willing to lose if it meant going down over what he stood for. And I, I just, I worry that there won't be another one. It's hard to, hard to imagine that there could be. I don't know how you'll see another Mark Hatfield, but I hope so. And if you'd like a ticket, you can go to HatfieldFilm.com for more information. <laughs> Push on. It's a big one. Alaska lures plenty of fishermen. There are three million lakes in the state. Crescent Lake is glacier fed and it sits in the Lake Clark National Park. This is the centerpiece of the Readout Mountain Lodge. Whether it's sockeye or silver salmon or giant trout, the guides at Readout Mountain will help you catch them. As the morning begins, guests pull themselves out of those comfortable beds to a warm fire in the lodge. Clear skies greet them as they prepare for a day on the lake, a lake filled with fish. Your group uh, has your own guide or guides, and you guys set the pace and the schedule by all means. Fishing is a major draw at Readout Mountain Lodge. Just look at these success stories. There's no excuse for not catching your quota at Readout Mountain Lodge. Due to the fact that we're the only operator out here, you don't have to rush to get to a particular fishing location or be the first one at a trailhead. I mean, this whole area is, is pretty much ours uh, only. And besides, it's your fish story. But with pictures like these, you won't need to embellish unless you want to. Sockeye, red salmon, coho, silver salmon, chinook, king salmon, and pink salmon. You won't be disappointed. The guys really know what they are doing. They fish these rivers and know the holes where the big fish like to hang out. If the salmon won't bite, trophy-sized trout are a good substitute. Lake trout, Arctic char, and the Dolly Varden are all native species at Readout Mountain Lodge. And there's not a lot of competition to catch them. Just kind of cast up in the fast stuff and let it just swing down in this, uh, this softer stuff right there. You don't have to be a skilled fisherman to catch fish around Readout Mountain. The guides really love what they do, and showing you how to love it too is just part of what they do. So I think people come up here, just get away, and to see nature how it's supposed to be. When you're fishing, time slips by. What your watch tells you doesn't matter much out here. You know, this is all national park, so it's gonna stay like this. Uh, it's like, you know, in today's world where, you know, you can, you can pretty much buy anything you want, this is something that, you know, you can't put a price on. In between casts, you look up in any direction and see nothing but those mountains. At the end of the day, back at camp, back at the lodge, the fish stories start to unfold. 
As the night goes on, the sky is still bright, the stories and the fish get bigger. A lot of times um, we get groups up here that the perfect way to end the day is down by the bonfire and typically after dinner um, people finish their desserts and either grab a cup of coffee or maybe another pint of Alaskan Amber and they'll wander down to the bonfire and we'll have some s'mores and a little bit of uh, guitar or mandolin playing and some singing, uh, maybe a game of horseshoes or two. It's just a, it's just a great time. Um, people share the day's stories and the fish that maybe were 20 inches at lunch then become 30 inches around the campfire at night. Um, and it's, it's just a fun time. I think it's really a great way to end the day. I had no idea that most of the dairy industry had taken their half-gallon ice cream cartons and shrunk them to a smaller size. At Lockmead Farms, you get a true half-gallon. At Lockmead Farms, truth still matters. At Lockmead Farms, we understand what trust means and that truth and quality still matter. At the Lockmead Dairy Plant, our award-winning milk is in everything from our 1% to our famous ice cream and sherbets. In 2013, our new peach and blueberry swirl sherbet took best in show for new products out of all the entries to quality Czech dairies across the nation. Our plant consistently walks away with gold awards for its milk and ice cream. The quality of our products means so much to us that we even grow our own peppermint oil and blueberries to flavor some of our favorites. We refuse to cut corners. This is a family business with our name written all over it. We didn't understand when most of the dairy industry shrunk their ice cream cartons to less than a half gallon and continued to charge the same price. How can a half gallon be less than a half gallon? That doesn't seem right, doesn't seem natural. At Lockmead, truth still matters. Our half gallon is still a true half gallon and it always will be. A good farmer knows not to fix something if it isn't broken. Well, that applies to the size of our cartons and the quality of our products. The truth matters at Lockmead. That's simply the way it's done. If you'd like to taste the truth, try one of our true half gallons or any other Lockmead product at your neighborhood Dairy Mart store, the home of Lockmead Farms, or in your natural food store. Okay, so I'm sitting in a cabin at the Readout Mountain Lodge, and I look outside, and here is this she-bear named Charlie, and she's literally rubbing her back up against this tree as I sit and look out my window. She's not more than 10 feet away. That wasn't scary, but this was. There are plenty of places to see bears in Alaska, and the first time you see a bear, it's an amazing experience. In fact, you'll see that coming up in just a second. But one of the things about Readout Mountain Lodge is you're seeing the bear in its habitat. No platforms, no crowds, it's just you, your guide, and the bear. When you talk about capturing a bear at Readout Mountain Lodge, what you capture is a snapshot or a memory that will last a lifetime. As far as this capturing a bear in its natural setting, doing what it's, what it's supposed to do, I don't think there's any better way than just hopping in a john boat, putting it on the oars, you know, there's no sound of the motor or anything, just you and the bear. There is something that happens to us when we experience nature one-on-one. -on -one. Why Readout Mountain? I guess primarily the bears. That was uh, what we came to see. We'd never seen bears close up. When you see nature as it is, something about our perspective changes and the world will never look the same. I think what I like about it is the, the, the sort of encounters with nature are uh, unplanned uh, and only lightly supervised. So you really feel that uh, you, you are there looking uh, down the nose of a bear, which happened to us this morning. The bears are literally everywhere. You never get used to seeing them. But after a while, you realize at Readout Mountain, humans truly are the visitors. We go up around the corner to one of those, you'll see. Looks like a bear amusement park out there. Mother bears and their cubs wander near the lodge or downstream. You must travel upriver to find what the guides call the big boys. 
Honestly, they could almost be performing for me. They're so close. They're just extraordinary. The star of this performance is a 1,000 pound boar. Close enough you can hear the crunching bones of the sockeye he devours. What happens next, none of us will ever forget. It was just pulling the boat gently down this very narrow river. Very uh, tight quarters with a lot of salmon. And there was one in the distance and it was a pool full of fish, so he was in his, having a lovely time catching fish. He was just doing his thing, so went up a little bit. Quite close, I mean, I suppose 100 yards away. He was catching fish and, you know, lots of lovely photos to take. I mean, so easy. And then he caught sight of us. Could definitely see that he wasn't looking at a fish, he was looking at us. And he started walking slowly towards us, and that's fine. I'm still clicking away, because somehow you feel safe behind the camera, you know. So I'm clicking away. So he started backing up, and he just gave us a little, uh, little run. Just to assert the fact that he was uh, in charge of this area. I, I think it's coming closer. <laughs> But it was a false charge, so it stopped, but that, so it's fine. But the photos I've got are just extraordinary. Most other lodges, they're, they're doing uh, a little bit of boat bear viewing, but mostly it's land-based. But, you know, as, as far as safety and, and just flexibility, I, I don't think you can beat just being in one of these flat-bottom john boats. I mean, it's perfect for throwing a tripod in there. Photographers come to Readout Mountain to capture the mountains. They come for the blue water, the birds, but most of all, they come to see bears living in the wild, doing what bears do naturally. In addition to overnight trips, Readout Mountain Lodge offers bear viewing day trips. Guests are fed a fresh cooked lunch and spend the day on the river viewing bears. If Alaska is considered remote, Readout Mountain Lodge takes it one step further. It's untouched here. There's, you know, there's 5,000 people a year that get into this park, which is extraordinary. You know, it's very, very lightly touched by humans, um, and that's a real privilege you know, to be able to see this sort of landscape, uh, which is majestic. We came to Alaska four years ago, and um, it's the, the only place we've been back to twice. <laughs> so that says something about it. Hey, if you have a story you think we should tell, get a call. Why is that so hard to do? I don't know why I can't get that out. Lodge. <laughs> this is called Rummy Dummy on TV. <laughs> Lockmead Farms. I want to thank Readout Mountain. I want to. Okay, let's do it again. I want to thank the Readout Mountain Lodge. <laughs> My name is Rip Gasser, and I can't remember what to say because I'm not that. <laughs>